I've been using the Nvidia Shield TV Pro for over a year now, and this is a truly fantastic device. I'm very glad that Nvidia updated the Shield TV and gave us this product, as this is one of the most interesting streaming boxes on the market in my opinion. You can play AAA games on this, watch your favorite shows through just about any app, and even play emulators all to your liking. So with that said, I want to evaluate how I feel about it after an entire year and to see if you should get one too. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Before we continue, I just wanted to remind you that we have a Twitch channel where we stream every Friday and Saturday from 8 p.m. and to 10 p.m. Eastern Time, so why not go ahead and drop a follow? And also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and also make sure to check out the merch store. There's plenty of black and white sweetness to choose from up there, so go ahead and check that out. And then make sure to take a look at the podcast as well, as the podcast always goes live every Wednesday and Sunday. And with that said, enough rambling, let us get straight into the video. And the exterior design consists of this plastic in certain parts and then matte in others with this green LED strip around the top. On the back, you're going to find an HDMI port, two USB-A ports, a proprietary power port, and an Ethernet port. This is a very small device as you can see, but it is quite powerful for sure, and the design still feels very modern, of course. This is a design that has honestly aged very well since it's one that has been here since earlier Nvidia Shield models. And now this version of the Nvidia Shield comes with this new little remote, and this remote lights up whenever it is moved around in any way in order to save on battery, and it's got all of your playback controls, even a microphone built in, and a dedicated Netflix button. If if you're into that. It's very comfortable to use thanks with shape and I haven't had to change the battery in over a year so battery life is going to be pretty darn good here. This is definitely the way to go. Even if you are using an older model of the Nvidia Shield, get this controller instead because it really is that much better than the older one that was on the previous models. And now the Shield TV Pro doesn't come with the Shield controller anymore so I did have to buy one separately. It is a nice controller in my opinion. You've got this uniquely shaped controller that looks uncomfortable but it is actually quite nice to use and it has an almost perfectly flat surface and one of my favorite d-pads on any controller but some nice triggers too battery life isn't going to be very good on this controller at this point though since it's clearly been degrading over time and this is an older controller after all i mean i had to buy it used on the secondary market so either way i mean there is that however you don't have to get this controller at all as you can use almost any controller that you want with the shield tv this even includes uh, the latest DualSense controller from Sony and the Xbox Series X controller from Microsoft, both of which have been tested and work totally fine on the Video Shield TV and TV Pro. And so as a streaming box, this has been a really nice device to use. To this day, it has been incredibly snappy when navigating the menus, and it's still just as responsive as it was back when I first bought it. It's truly a great streaming box with just about every streaming app that you might want for it. Things like Netflix, Hulu, Showtime, Spotify, HBO, Disney+, Plus, Crunchyroll, Funimation, Twitch, and so many more apps just like it. One special feature of the Shield TV is also that it can do 4K upscaling with 1080p content if you have a 4K TV and don't want to miss out on that extra resolution that you paid for. Now I don't have a 4K TV, so I actually haven't used this feature, but it is worth noting. Reports say that it does indeed work quite well, but my point with all of this is that this is a streaming box that should easily last you years since it's so powerful and it has just about anything that you're going to need to use it. I haven't found myself missing any apps at all here, this has been a fairly complete experience. And when it comes to emulation, you do get a very good experience. Thanks to that USB port on the back and the fact that this is running Android TV, you can plug in an external hard drive and fill that up with games if you wanted to. However, it can't emulate everything since, for example, there isn't a reliable way of even emulating PlayStation 2 games right now. But you can still use things like RetroArch, for instance, to keep all your emulators in just one easy place you can just play your games from there. So, for example, I do have 
a Nintendo 64 emulator where I do play Pokemon Stadium every now and then, but I mostly like to use the PSP emulator PPSSPP to play Persona 3 Fest and much more. There is a lot of potential here when it comes to its hardware performance, and hopefully we will have the opportunity to actually get a proper PlayStation 2 emulator at some point as a PlayStation 2 as a goldmine of games, things like Mortal Kombat Armageddon, which is subjectively a, one of the best PlayStation 2 games, but then again, it is competing with things like Final Fantasy X and many, many, many more games. However, many people do love using the Shield as an emulation machine, and so do I. It is going to be very nice and comfortable way of playing some older games with just about any controller that I want. I love that aspect of it for sure. And now let's talk about game streaming with GeForce Now. This, this is likely going to be the biggest reason for gamers to get the Shield TV. GeForce Now is fantastic in terms of performance. There is no dancing around that. I can play at 60 frames per second to 80p for the vast majority of games, and that includes something like Darksiders 3 for instance. While it's not the most demanding game out there, it is still something that streams surprisingly well onto the basement. Yeah, but there are going to be quite a few games that you can play with GeForce Now also, so you've got a lot of options including Cyberpunk 2077, but I wish that there were more options when it comes to RPGs. I can game stream them from my Steam library, but the connection gets really shoddy at this point and I didn't enjoy it so much, so I would love for more Final Fantasy games and many more added to GeForce Now someday at some point. However, performance is still very great, but I would love to see more games that I'm actually interested in personally, and I am, again, just speaking from personal experience here since I do have my own preferences. However, as we learned before, it's not Nvidia's fault. It was the publishers that decided to pull their games out of the service, so that likely can't be helped. However, one big benefit of using GeForce Now is that if you own the game on Steam or on the Epic Store, for instance, and they support it, then you don't have to buy the game again. By any means and you can just start streaming it just like so without the need of having your PC turned on it'll be streaming from Nvidia's own servers just like so however streaming from Steam is still an option for people who do really want that and who don't care about having two devices turned on at the same time I would generally prefer not to just just for the sake of saving energy but I also understand kind of having to do things that way and now on to some of my complaints after one year Honestly, a lot of my issues from before still stand because not much seems to have changed since then. I still wish it has a USB-C port since it's more powerful than USB-A, but a combination of the two would have been best in my opinion. I guess I'm more so glad that they gave us USB-A ports versus just all USB-C ports, so I guess that there's that. And I do wish that there was a more reliable way to emulate PlayStation 2 games. I understand how difficult it is to create an emulator that is optimized well enough to work with the Shield TV and doesn't have much to do with Nvidia, but just with the speed at which these developers are, are able to work on these. I very much respect their work and I look forward to seeing more in the future. And also during gaming, the Nvidia Shield can get pretty hot, but it is not so bad that I've experienced shutdowns or worse performance by any means. Also, I wish that the Shield TV came with more in internal storage as the current amount is rather anemic, hence why I got an external drive to save my games in, but I do also really love that, that it is still an option and that it is so easy to just add expandable storage on there. That's honestly a pretty great thing. And that's pretty much everything I have to say up until now. I have a lot of praise for the Nvidia Shield TV now, same as I did before, and I have only grown to like it even more. It's got consistently great performance and it's very versatile in what it lets you do. This is the only streaming box that, that I can fathom wanting in my setup and I simply cannot look elsewhere as Nvidia has a great value proposition here. And sure, it's not like a super cheap thing to buy, but at $200, I believe that it is absolutely worth it for the Pro version, but the Tube version is only 50 bucks cheaper, which is still a significant difference for some, and performs more or less the same, minus some minor and some major differences here and there. But this is a product that I am very happy recommending in 2021, so you have my blessing. 
And if you are interested in purchasing the Nvidia Shield TV Pro or just the two version, then I'll be making sure to leave affiliate links down to Amazon in the description to both of them. And also, don't forget that Luster is going to be an option. In case you're trying to find sales for any of these things, Luster has been a great tool for helping me find discounts on other sites and things like that. So you're not just limited to Amazon. However, I'm going to be leaving links to that down below because it is a really useful tool to use, especially if you do want to save some money. But there's also going to be a bunda in case you would rather finance either one of these instead of just paying for them outright. Like maybe you you just want to try it out, but you're not exactly sure if you're willing to spend that much money. Uh, you can just go through a bunda's link and buy it. You can finance it over time, and if and if you end up not wanting it, you can always return it to Amazon. But if you decide that you do actually want to keep it, and you do get a pretty sweet financing deal that it is pretty tough to pass up. You don't need your own credit card at all, so links for that down below. If you use any of my links, I do get a small commission that does help me out quite a bit so i would appreciate that quite a bit and also do make sure to stop by the tech summit podcast that does go live every week so make sure to subscribe for that so that you don't miss any episodes i also like to stream on twitch every friday and saturday from 8 p.m to 10 p.m eastern time however by the time of this video's release uh that will not be happening considering that i'm not going to be in the country i am recording this ahead of time after all but with that said i'm going to have the rest of my social media right here like my instagram and my twitter and this has been francisco from tech summit thank you so much for watching and i will be seeing you all later enjoy <laughs>